You're tuned in to Nonfiction Radio, New Jersey's number one online radio station. Listen live at nonfictionradio.com or download the Nonfiction Radio app on your phone or Android device. It is the last Friday of 2017. I am excited. I'm overwhelmed with joy. I got my godson next to me, MB. And he's making me proud. Like, he could have asked me if he could come to the studio, and I could have heard his song, and I could have been like, I'm booked. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm booked all the way to 2019. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't, and I'm, and I'm happy. I, I'm liking his music. He's doing his thing. Welcome to your auntie's show. <laughs> See, y'all don't know how I'll be doing it in the mornings when I get up. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Come in here and do it right. So, what's up, MB? Not much. I'm just focusing on the music, trying to do my thing right now. That's all. You doing it? You doing it? I mean, you know, when did this start? Cause I ain't even know till like yesterday. You know uh, what I mean? <laughs> so how did this start? It, it, it really started cause you know, like nowadays, I feel like a lot of artists, you know, they try to rap or whatever the case may be, but it ain't a lot of people out here that can really rap. You know, they really right. get them balls on the track. Like, so my whole rap career kind of started. I always knew I could rap. You feel me? I never took it serious though. Like it was never something I took serious until one day, like I heard somebody, they had did a remix to a song, and it's funny because it's actually the song that we listen to right now. Okay. They had did a remix to this song, and I just thought to myself, like, yo, I can do this better than you know. And that's how it started. You feel me? I got on the song, did my thing, I got my feedback. Everybody said they was feeling it. Everybody was rocking with it, so I kept going with it. And here we are now. Um. People will tell you though that the music is hot. They sit there, they'll nod their head, you know what I'm saying? But how did you know that you had it, you know, for yourself? Because um, people are just gonna tell you anything, you know, to pacify you at the time. Yeah, that's true. Um, like, I knew I had it just from listening to my music, you feel me? Just from the things that I talk about, like listening to other people's music. Like, I'm like, I'm talking like a grown man, like, you feel me? Like, and I'm only 22 years old, so I, I knew I had it right there when I, when I was really like connecting with grown up people, with people that's older than me. I got people looking up to me, telling me like, yo, you feel me? Keep doing what you're doing. Like, so I knew I had it right there, like when I had the older crowd rocking with me, so. Yeah, well, I'd like to take a little bit of credit for that, being that you grew up under me. In your upbringing, what can you say has been the most influence or impact on you as a young man? Honestly, I can say like my mom and my sister and my grandmother, like, you feel me? I, I want them to have the best in life, you feel me? Always and forever. So, like, you know, that's a lot of motivation for me right there, you know? Just thinking about them, like, you feel me? And how I want to put them in a better place, put them in a big house, get them a crib, you know? Who would you roll with if you could? What team? Okay. What clique? You know what I'm saying? Who do you feel that you really can relate to that you could fit in with? Especially. Staying with the same ones I came with, man. Okay. Okay. Real talk. I like you know that. what? And that we talked about that last mm-hmm. week. This is what people don't understand. You want to jump on a crew that's already rolled the ride that you're trying to ride, yeah. and they pass that. So you gotta come up with a team. Do you have a tight team? I mean, I, I, yeah, something like that. I got a little team. You feel me? I wouldn't consider it a team. Like you feel me? It's my brothers. You feel me? People that I came up with, grew up with, been through a lot of situations with. So that's just what it is. Okay. So, okay, so you coming in the game a little different. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. What would you change in this world through your music if you could? If I could change something through this world, I think it would be like... Yeah, because you, listen, you are going to find yourself in a position where, yeah, it's fun to make music or you, this is what you're doing from your heart. Mm-hmm. But it's going to become a responsibility. Yeah. 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 So, like, basically, I just want to make the world a better place. And that's all I can possibly say, you know, like, maybe change some people's view on racism or the things of that nature. You know? like, just want to bring positivity. You know? All right. Yeah. So tell me about your songs. What, 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 which um, one, which one you want to break down for me? R and S, like, that's basically, like... I don't know how to explain that, you feel me? It's just things that I've seen, like, you feel me? Things that I've been around. Yeah, I just, yeah, like, pretty much, you feel me? Like, like what they said, like, just things that I've been around, things that I've seen, so I was able to put it into a song. And that's what well, I do know, because I got the inside, mm. that, um, you know, you have 
been living off and on or visiting for long periods of time or temporarily, you know, whatever, yeah. seasonal holiday. You have been to Boston. Yes. Yeah. And we just all fell in love with the new edition story. Yeah. Um, you know, you are related to Bobby Brown. Absolutely. Um, so what was what can you say the That's difference? Because cool, yeah. every hood seems to have the same elements, yeah. but every hood has its own identity and uniqueness. Uh, what I can say is Boston is nothing like here. You feel me? I, I've been going out there for many summers. I have friends out there, I got family out there. Like you feel me? My friends from Boston probably watching this right now as we speak. You feel me? Like it's different out there. It's a different type of time out there. It's like completely different. Like it's like the '80s still out there. Like for real. Like it's poverty. It's, okay. it's, it's just really hood out there. You feel me? So that's the difference in between here and there. Like so, it may it really makes you realize because I think our kids are so spoiled in yeah. Bergen County. Yeah, absolutely. You know, y'all be acting like you're poor, and y'all don't really know what poor is. I, I taught like, in Patterson. I know. Yeah, like y'all take a trip yeah, with me to right, Boston. You right. feel me? And I can really show y'all what poor is. You feel me? I'm talking about people living in the projects, still using food stamps, you feel me, still cooking chitlins, all that, like, you feel me, I can really show you, like, what it's like to not have nothing, so, you know, be thankful for what you got, because I really know people that don't got nothing. Like. Story is very upsetting, because, you know, when you hear of stories of molestation, rape, uh, in, you know, inappropriate things when it comes to children hear that the person that went through it never said anything so you can't say what everybody was going to do if the person never said anything two years later but then you have a situation where children that tell this is what the worst part of it all besides the molestation is to confide in people that you love and are supposed to protect you and they don't do anything about it so miss ayana um you know came upon a situation which i'll let you basically tell the story but you know it's it's like we're all cheering for you the fact that you were able to get up the courage to stand up to your attacker so let's go to where it all started how did this whole thing happen um i mean how went about approaching no from the very beginning you were six years old yeah um when I was six, my mother, she had got a job and she had to work overnight. So what she did was she had let us spend the night over at my aunt's house, my oldest aunt, while she went to work and pick us up in the morning and take us to school. That was a routine. So okay. we stayed over there a couple nights. I didn't have a problem. It was just one particular night. But wait, you have siblings? You have? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got a little brother. Okay. And he was there too? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. He was there. And we had other cousins that was over there as well that she, my aunt was taking care of for her sister. Okay. So, um, that's where it went down at that, that night. Um, I spent the night over there. I woke up to him doing what he was doing. And, um, I don't know who he, who else he done rolled over to doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. From what I'm told from, you know, around my family that this is not the first time with a family member. And one of my cousins at the time, she was three, so she wouldn't remember, but, you know, that's... How dirty you gotta be to even think right. about you know somebody that's small that young mm -hmm. so so okay so when the incident happened you told your mom right away yeah i told her when she came to get us i was okay. trying to tell my aunt right away but um it was no way for me to reach her without crossing him that night oh wow so. and she's not with this guy anymore no okay so why did you come across him at a funeral he just I mean, he's still friends with the family? My cousin, my, my younger cousin, I was there that night. She, um, her sister passed away, her older sister. So, all our family, you know, we came, got together for that. And he was there. I'm assuming he was there to support her. Okay. Because this is somebody, you know, she called daddy growing up. It's not her father. Oh, okay. And he was there. It was only them two sitting together. You know, he wasn't sitting with nobody else. But, like I was, you know, saying before in other interviews, you know, my family knew about what was going on. They knew that it happened, you know. So for him to even feel that comfortable coming here, right. being here, you know, and you ain't just come to the funeral who paid your respects. You came to the repast, the, you know. So that's boldness. That's nerve. Right. That's in consideration. I mean, you got to be that kind of person in the first place, right? right. Like you said. 
But to still not have any remorse is what really will make you want to knock a nigga's head off behind that. Because right. if these years later, you know, you could have been a cracked out prostitute. You could have been like this could have totally took you to a place of no return. And I'm sure that it affected you in certain ways throughout your life. When you were coming up upon challenges, did you feel like there was something in you that was trying to get out? Um, did, did you know that it was affecting you? Was it something un- that you thought about all the time? It, was, it took for me to get older for understanding that why I did things that I did because of what happened to me and mm-hmm. how it did it exposed me way too early to things I wouldn't have known, you know, left it up to my mother. So, um, it, it let me get that power away to men and gave them that control because I was taught from yes. that experience that you had control and I didn't. And even when speaking out, nothing happened. So, right. this is okay. Right. Absolutely. So, do you have any children of your own? Yeah, I have a son. He's three. Okay. So, what kind of relationship do you are you able to have with your... I wouldn't be able to talk to nobody. How do you look these people in the face and... I mean, since then, when I first originally posted the video, I had a cousin reach out to me telling me he don't like the fact that I use um, his sister's death as a platform to expose dude, but he'll be dealt with. Like, I don't understand why you're not even confronting the situation at hand. And right. And how I honestly feel is, why was I even... Why did I even have an opportunity to say this to him? Why was right. Why was he even there? In the same room with me while I'm with family, you know, so... Um, I think at the point we are we at now, I can't even do that. But with um uh. my mother when it first happened, she pressed charges. That got interrupted because he ended up getting locked up for three years after that for some drug charges. So that's So they I never think. even brought it to trial. Uh uh-uh, uh, no, we didn't even get that far. But he is a registered sex offender. Okay. In North North, so All right. So you're sitting there, you go to a funeral, you see this guy. What was going through your head in terms of, I mean, because really it was that time or or never because you didn't know if you would ever see him again. And you probably could have not said it and went on with your life, but he deserved that. There's no reason why he shouldn't have been put on blast at that particular moment because he's gotten away with all these years of no, nothing. And you don't even know if he still did it later again or whatever the case is. But what did the process, like, what did your mind go through before you picked up that phone and started recording? Um, I contemplated with my cousin. It was her mom's friend that we was at. So I'm talking to her. I was letting her know how I feel. Like, look, I might just do this. You know, I'm debating about putting my hands on him, you know, doing something crazy. At the same time, trying to have respect for why we did all the to begin with so it was already a sensitive situation right i was in right. so you know i was like i don't know a, a switch just went off in my mind i was like i can't dare have this man sitting here comfortable because that's what he looked like mm. while i'm sitting here uncle. too too but like I, was so upset I, I if you look at his face there's no get, he's just like <laughs> whatever nobody, nobody believes you still so right and nobody in my family still haven't on that side because you know my father's side they've been supportive but and okay. they didn't know for a long time cause my father didn't know my, my mother i guess didn't want to tell my father for what she knew he would do right and, yeah he'd have been in jail right mm-hmm. so nobody on that side of the family has reached out to me yet i feel like maybe it's some animosity going on but how could you be mad at me for something that happened to me that, right you know, like, right anything, and then I especially in somebody else's care Exactly. So they, they feel like I'm trying to make them look bad. Y'all did that on your own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't make it look no worse than what it is. I shouldn't maybe they even made that video. I mean, damn, why can't they apologize to you? You know, I've had I've 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 I have a twenty three year old, you're twenty three. So now there's times in my life where maybe I was preoccupied. Maybe I was in the street. You know, maybe I was having too much fun. I have boyfriends. Whatever. You know, but if I come to a point and I realize that there's something detrimental that I've done to my kids that is affecting them, you know, I would have to apologize. I would have to own up to it. I'm a goddamn adult. I who am I to to put that pressure and stress on a child? 
and not even have the courtesy and the, the decency to be apologetic about it. There's no way for me to be bitter about it now. There's no way for me to allow it. The reason why I expressed that in that video is because this is my first time actually facing who made me feel mm -hmm. like, you know, what I had to overcome over the years, that pain. But right now, I feel like I'm more in a position to help other people that went through that situation. Because, yeah. I mean, even though I'm dealing with my own battles and I got to fight it, um, I just know that it's so many kids right now that I know is not speaking that's afraid to speak and I'm trying to see if what if what I did could encourage those to say something right and that way they could deal with that pain you know deal with recovering from that early because I had to recover throughout the years on my own and mm -hmm. now you know I'm going through the healing process even more because I had so many people you know thousands of people been reaching out to me from you know strangers and that's what's it, it's, me. it's like yeah. strangers are always the ones that show up for us right my mother she passed away when i was 14 so mm. that forced me in so many areas to be strong and i had to fend for myself physically mm. financially emotionally so it kind of benefited me in the long run it hurt me in a lot of places because i had to learn things on my own that should have been taught but mm -hmm. i mean like it's making me feel good. The messages I'm getting, you know, what people say, you know, I'm 16 years old. I shouldn't be telling you this, but I'm about to go tell my mother right now. Mm -hmm. You touched me yesterday and stuff. You know, yeah. people telling me what they should be telling their parents or right. telling the parents right. yeah, for that yeah, matter. Yeah. So it's making me feel good seeing it change. You know, in, a, but what in our you generation. Tell, what advice what are you about. giving them? Like, what do you, uh, you know, of course you're I saying. I mean, 100%, I'm going to tell you to go for it. Don't, right. You know, and, and what I also mention is sometimes we're going to have our parents or people in our family that's not going to believe us, but don't let that stop from, you know, let, letting, you know, authorities know someone at your school that you've been abused and you shouldn't have to go through that. Yeah. Are you in a relationship now? Yeah, that was my boyfriend. Okay. So how's he dealing with, I mean, how long have you been with him? Um, February we make it seven years. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay, so he's been there through the whole thing. Yeah, he's been around. And you ain't been using him. He's so nice. Yeah, I don't, yeah, <laughs> I don't say I have to. Don't but. manipulate him. He's a nice guy. Nah. But, I mean, so, of course, he's been there for you through the process and everything. And that's a good thing. That's yeah. your We don't talk about it, though. I, I kind of okay. kept it to my... And my father now, he reaching out to me trying to, you know, telling me, you know, can you... Please explain to me if you feel comfortable with exactly right. what happened. But right. I don't have no problem talking about it, but it's not something I'm, I I'm like to talk about it. Over, I want to yeah. see how <clears throat> I could create more solutions for what happened. Like, all right, we're going to talk about the problems, what happened. We know right. stories. It's going on. Now, what can yeah. we do about it? How can yeah. we raise more awareness and, yeah, you know, yeah. have some type of prevention for these mm -hmm. situations? Mm -hmm. And what are signs, you know, kids can make the, the let people know in case they don't want to say it verbally? Mm -hmm. you know? Right. So I'm trying to create right now different ideas that I want to present to you know schools and stuff in the city and uh, mm -hmm. I think it'll be good for boys and girls because believe it or not I have way more males hit me up molested and raped and than then females. You wonder way why more. We have you. What you did? That's power. Like, like still to this day, it's like not even to be nonchalant. I, I'm like for herself sometimes. Like when I hear other people, whether they talk to her directly or about me, they like, oh, she's so courageous. I'm like. Like, that's like regular. And then like, for, for people that actually do know her personally, like it's like it's like a win for everybody. Like just seeing like positivity flow within like, your loved ones and, and then strangers. But um, I think like, man, like she gotta be one of the strongest people that I know. So I just want to thank you for coming um, again. And um, listen, keep my number, um, whatever you need, I'm here for you. And um, I see, you know, some great things coming down the line for you. And I wish you all the blessings in Thank the world. You. I appreciate and it. We yeah. have my cover. So you in good hands. Oh. And, um, yeah, keep us posted. And, you know, we'll show up when we can. And yes. we got you definitely have our support. And good luck. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so good much. Luck. Okay.